The Metro series offers a unique and thrilling experience combining survival horror, first-person shooting and stealth. Set in the bleak, post-apocalyptic metro system of Russia and occasionally the toxic surface, Metro 2033 and Last Light, the first two titles in the groundbreaking series from 4A Games, have made their way to the Nintendo Switch in the form of Metro Redux. But are the games any good and does the port do these games justice? I'm James Amera here at Switchwatch. Let's jump in and find out. To kick things off, I'm starting with an overview of the purchasing options and the poor performance at a high level. Later on, I'll review the games together in our normal format covering story, gameplay, audio and value. In terms of options, there is a physical release which includes the Redux versions of both 2033 and Last Light along with all of the DLC on a single cartridge. For those who want to buy one or the other, you could do so in digital format as each title is sold separately on the eShop. If you do go for the physical edition, there is a lovely Rangers Cash version with a double-sided poster, sleeve, badges, double-sided inlay and double-sided art cards. This one looks really nice. When a large AAA game is ported onto the Switch, it's almost always outsourced. Companies like Panic Button have carved out a niche as specialists in this field, whilst many others typically deliver lower quality work. Foray took the decision to do all of the work in-house instead of using a third party, and I'm delighted that they did so as the results are strong. Firstly, comparisons show that this is the Redux versions of both games which launched on the PS4 and Xbox One in 2014, as opposed to the originals on last-gen consoles, which is significant because of the visual upgrades, especially to Metro 2033, but also because it added a raft of gameplay tweaks, but more on that later. Unloading up and playing the games, you are struck by how stunning they look, and diving under the bonnet, the games run 1080p at 30 frames per second when docked, and 720p at 30 frames per second in handheld. The frame rate doesn't tell the whole story, however, as the game's visuals are dynamic, allowing on-the-fly drops in detail on screen to avoid any slowdown or performance dips. The end result looks great and is certainly closer to the PS4 and Xbox One than it is to the PS3 and Xbox 360 version. In handheld, the same is true, however the quality rarely dips and is extremely impressive. I'd go so far as to say this is one of the best ports we've ever seen in handheld mode. With a doctor in handheld, the frame rate never suffers, the port is very much optimised and I experienced no performance issues. The visuals ran smoothly through both titles. And this great work isn't just to the visuals. The game's controls are spot on. There is no input lag or other hindrance and loading times are not overly long either. Whether on the move or docked, it's safe to say that 4 games have demonstrated that the little Switch hardware can be pushed to deliver great results. The decision to make this port in-house has certainly paid off. The only slight issue to report is that the games are extremely dark by nature and when you play in handheld mode, the blacks can be hard to distinguish. I don't believe this is a port issue as such, rather it's just down to the Switch screen itself. It's not often a problem and it adds to the sense of foreboding, but there are a couple of times when you will struggle to see quite enough detail. Nevertheless, kudos to 4 Games for an exceptional port. Metro 2033 is based on Dmitry Kukovsky's novel and is set in the ruins of Moscow following a nuclear war where the survivors are forced to live in underground metro tunnels. The world is a bleak place infested by mutants, factions of people struggling just to survive by any means necessary, including killing and robbing others. As if that wasn't enough, the air outside of the tunnels is toxic and there are mysterious horrors known as dark ones lurking that mess with your mind. You play as Artem, a man who must save his home station from all of these dangers, a tough and grim ask. The game thrusts you into this world complete with lots of subplots and struggles all around you in the metro's hubs. For the most part you are heading through, but some of it seeps in. A child struggling to collect scraps or some vets getting drunk and looking in a sorry state. The background is welcome and having a book be your source material no doubt led to a stronger depth and presence. The core story feels exactly like what it's based on, a thrilling action adventure intertwined with horror and suspense. In between missions, Artem himself narrates the story, reliving what was happening at the moment and cutscenes which are experienced in the first person. These changes were added to the Redux version and it definitely improves the storytelling. Metro Last Light picks up where Metro 2033 left off after a large-scale event that I won't spoil if you haven't played the first game before. This time, 
the story delves deeper into the factions and politics at play and introduces some strong new characters and delves deeper into the mystery of the Dark Ones. The game's narration has improved and through the Redux remaster of 2033, it definitely feels like both games form one arching story. I love the way Artin retells his story and the pacing and reveals are spot on. The story is a positive addition and sets the scene without getting in the way at the wrong time, destroying the suspense. Limited resources is a term that springs to mind when it comes to 2033. It portrays the harsh situation humanity is in, plus our ingenuity. Weapons are cobbled together in clever ways and ammo is currency. Even filters for your gas mask can be hard to manage effectively and all of this reminds me of the original Resident Evil, whereas battle plays out like a traditional FPS game as you slay hordes of enemies. The choice is there to be stealthy as well and often you will need to do so in order to make it through. Thankfully, as part of the Redux upgrade to 2033, the enemy AI has been vastly improved, making their reactions more predictable and realistic. Last Light kept the same feel as the original, but is more expansive and leans more towards the FPS side of the equation with more open world settings and larger enemy counts and more ammo. This makes Last Light easier to get into when compared to 2033 and to some degree changes the whole experience. One of the additions is the ability to choose from survival and Spartan modes in either game. Essentially, survival gives you the original 2033 tough experience with a focus on sneaking and managing resources, while Spartan is more gun-ho, shoot first, think later. With the introduction of Redux, 2033 was vastly overhauled. It wasn't a matter of just sprucing up the visuals, though they definitely did that. As well as the AI I talked about, there are numerous changes such as overhauling the menus, and in-game interfaces, the ability to wipe your gas mask and switching cutscenes to first person, plus much more. The games play out as a series of connected missions heading through the tunnels or over the world surface. I love the variety on offer here between fighting monsters head on, sneaking away from larger more dangerous threats and taking on human enemies in either way. The action is so well crafted, just when you think you can take a breather, a curveball is thrown in and you are driving a cart through the tunnels, running away from the dark ones, or suddenly facing giant spiders. Often as you make your way through each game's campaigns, you are accompanied for periods of time, which again adds to that variety whilst also unfolding the story and stopping you from making your way through the games too slowly. At times the tunnels become claustrophobic and your spidey senses tingle. Outside of the light, everything is so dark that you always feel as if you're being watched. The games use light particularly well, both to create tension but also as a hiding mechanic. Your trusty little watch glows blue when you'll be visible and almost every light is interactive. Before each encounter, you'll be thinking about the best way to tackle it, except of course, when you were sprung upon. At other times, the impending threat of running out of air filters for your gas mask forces you to get moving and this variety combined with the constant nudges makes for a thrilling and tough experience. There is no rest here and yet at the same time you are always conscious of how many bullets you have and whether you need to save your throwables. The controls are exactly as you would expect from an FPS title, though combat itself is good as opposed to great. At times enemies bunch up and your bullets can feel a bit thin. There is no auto lock so you need to be accurate and the weapons on offer are on the conservative side. You won't find countless rocket launchers down in the Moscow Metro. There are pistols, rifles, snipers and shotguns that start out quite anemic but can be upgraded as you get further in. The bastard rifle, for example, is not that strong and wildly inaccurate, but by adding a scope, better stock and more, it can become a decent weapon. Or eventually you will find an AK-47 and start upgrading that. Military grade bullets are your currency, but also as a nice touch serve as powerful bullets for desperate situations. It's these little details that stand out about Metro Redux. You have a trusty lighter that burns cobwebs and there are countless collectibles to be discovered and many hidden areas full of small side situations that are worth finding. It's immersive and balances the oppression with the excitement of discovery. The games both have various difficulty options, so should you wish to ratchet up that survival feeling, you can do so, adding to the sense of choice. You could play both games in your preferred style and the difficulty, including Ranger mode, where you have no HUD and even less resources and more monsters. On top of both campaigns, you have all of the DLC, which adds roughly another 10 hours, so in total, you're getting 40 plus hours if you want to delve that deep. Chuck, are you seeing this shit too? The audio in Metro Redux is used to build tension primarily. Creepy sounds, creaks and freaky flashback audio from the old world slowly grow, giving you that jumpy feeling. 
The orchestral music similarly builds in tandem and the game switches well to more pumping, action tracks at the right moments. The audio is subtle, none of the songs stand out as such, but it adds to the overall experience and the voice acting throughout is well done. Passing through towns you can hear all manner of conversations and if you stop to listen, it's a joy to the ears. Similarly, some of the monsters create some excellent and truly scary sounds. These games are well known for pushing the boundaries visually when they originally released on PC. The first console releases dumb that down some way, but the Redux version does an excellent job of adding in some of those details. Dynamic lighting, particle effects and great use of dark shades. On top of that though, the game's models and movement look superb, especially when you consider this is on a Nintendo Switch. But it isn't all about frame rates and high fidelity, it's also about a game's art style and quality and Metro Redux delivers. It has a strong sense of self and generally does well at creating the world in which a story is based. There are little details like graffiti in the metro and broken remnants of our time on the surface. Small things like the time on the watch and wiping blood off with a gas mask all combined work very, very well. For a game that is so praised on its looks, it's interesting that much of it is based underground. That makes it the more stark when you do head up above for short bursts. There are not quite enough different enemy types in my book. That is perhaps the one area lacking, but atmospheric details like lighting are spot on. When you consider these are superb games from start to finish and that they have been lovingly ported onto the Nintendo Switch, including all of the DLC by 4 games themselves, it's hard to argue that this is a strong package. There are over 40 hours of gameplay here and the Redux versions mean that if you only played 2033 when it first came out, there is enough change and enhancements to warrant the investment. The physical package, especially the Ranger's cash, is lovely and at £40 or $50 it's well worth it in my opinion. If you have already played the Redux version then it's a tougher sell. If you completed just one of the games and don't want to double dip it's nice to have the option to pick up either game digitally for half the cost. Metro Redux is two fantastic games in a wonderful package. The combination of survival horror, story driven FPS and stealth is solid and stands up the test of time very well. The port from 4 Red Games is a wonderful job and lays the gauntlet down for other developers out there and begs the question, is it better to port these games in house? If you've never played these titles then you cannot go wrong and if you have, playing these on the move is an exciting prospect with your headphones in. Overall, this is an exceptional 9 out of 10, one not to miss. I hope you've enjoyed this video, thanks for watching and let us know down below which of the Metro games is your favourite. If you plan on picking up the physical release of this, you will find an Amazon link in the description below. If you choose to buy through the link, it supports the channel, so thank you for that. If you're looking for more reviews like this one, then be sure to subscribe. We also have physical release roundup every Monday and we scour the eShop to find the best bargains every Sunday. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.